You guys ever dance with the devil in the pale moonlight? Well, it looks like I'm going to be able to do so after finally finding the Keaton Batman from McFarlane Toys for the Flash movie. Wave, a figure that is slightly becoming a little difficult to find since it seems like it was made less so than the other figures of the Flash Wave and for probably good reason because we can definitely tell that McFarlane himself is a huge fan of the Keaton Batman and so he made this a bit of a commodity within that wave at least for the initial first batches I perceive it to be a bit more readily available as time goes on but for the time being this is a very sought after figure frankly though I will be the first to admit that Keaton is not necessarily one of my favorite Batman I definitely like his interpretation of the character I definitely warmed up to him a bit more as a grown adult versus when I was a kid and so to see that McFarlane Toys is delivering a figure on him is very satisfying granted it's not necessarily the exact 89 model it's actually the version that he's going to be donning in the Flash movie with a completely revamped suit that kind of uses elements from both the original Burton-esque inspired suit while at the same time incorporating some tactical little details to bring it much more to modern contemporary audiences or contemporary looks. And McFarlane Toys, despite our personal reservations that we had from those promo shots where we had the likeness of the Keaton version on the face and thinking to ourselves... Uh, this is kind of reminding us a bit of an issue that we've had with McFarlane Toys, especially one that I kind of presented in my initial essay where I was comparing the McFarlane Toys versus Marvel Legends and mentioning about how ever so often McFarlane doesn't really nail it when it comes to real life faces. Comic book interpretations are okay, but it's when they adapt certain characters from movies that they often kind of miss the mark a little bit, save for a couple of outliers like I mentioned before, Black Adam Wave is actually a little bit on the mark, whereas certain figures from the Batman series or even most recently the Dark Knight Trilogy Wave is kind of hit or miss. And here, yes, you can make an argument that Keaton is a little lost in translation, especially a little bit with the puffed up uh, cheeks and just certain nuances that aren't quite there to really make us believe that it's Keaton under that cowl. But if you're able to get past that, this, ladies and gentlemen, is a very solid and badass McFarlane Toys Batman figure. One that definitely sends the message that out of the entirety of the Flash Wave, McFarlane definitely has a clear favorite, and that is going to be this 89 Keaton Batman from that Flash movie. And like I mentioned, even though we don't necessarily have a one-to-one -one replication of that original 89 suit, he's at least able to make the quality of this suit that we're going to be getting in the Flash movie come across almost premium feeling in the 7-inch scale. Sure, it's still made out of a very tough, durable rubber plastic, but it definitely doesn't feel like it's just plastic of a different variety with a coat of black paint just scrambled on top of it. Much like some other recent McFarlane figures, particularly the Dark Knight Trilogy wave that we've been getting, where you immediately pull them out of the box and you get this huge waft of just acrylic paint just, just invading your nostrils and just making you feel almost sick. This figure definitely does not have any of that. You could definitely tell that the plastic utilized here is made out of a black filament as opposed to just being painted on. And as such, the actual quality of plastic, it's got almost like a bit of a weight to it, while at the same time feeling pretty premium in hand and very quality and durable and making all of the little details of the sculpt and the and the etchings within the actual suit and armor feel very great in hand and also look pretty good up on the shelf especially coming through not only in person but also in some of the photos and b-roll that you're about to witness an awful lot of the sheen is seen throughout the abdomen and the crotch area that looks very good as well as the shoulder pieces the chest and then of course that glorious and iconic bat symbol there on the chest that even though it's a little bit mismanaged there with a little bit of paint kind of dribbling from the black into the yellow I'm able to forgive it because of just how iconic and also pretty good. It's also a little bit embossed with a bit of a matte finish, a bit of a texturized grip to it. And that textured grip surface that you can find a little bit within the bat symbol could also be found popping out here and there throughout the suit to give it, again, more of a tactical feel with a little bit of the paneling happening along the sides of the thighs here. You can see that the glossiness is on the inwards portion, whereas on the outside you have a little bit of this matted textured finish that 
that makes everything feel very firm in hand while at the same time part of the armoring. Same thing goes for the biceps, the shoulders, and the gauntlets that feel very solid. Even though they're made out of, the, like I said, that rubberized plastic, it never feels cheap. It never feels like it's being warped. And everything just comes together to form one of the finer suits that I've seen on a Batman figure in quite some time. Though mine did come with a little bit of scuffing here towards the top side part of the abs. That's one thing that I feel like it's just a personal thing on my one unit here. And that fine work on the sculpting still stretches out to the cowl that is housing the, again, near loss of resemblance to Keaton within the mouthpiece that you can make the argument doesn't really look all that much like him but you still can't deny the really intricate work that went into designing this brand new version of the cowl that even though it's not the exact one from the 89 version of the suit it's definitely the one from the Flash movie and they were able to sculpt it and etch it out just fine while at the same time reaching what I consider to be a bit of a happy medium with those side eyes because even though he is definitely not looking straight at you in a very neutral position it's also not looking off to the left or off to the right completely in that particular angle they were able to strike a balance to where he's looking a little off to the screen while at the same time not completely ostracizing certain poses that you could put him in because it's not completely going off skew in those directions it's not straight but it's angled enough to give him a bit of a lifelike kind of quality and still not comp compromising certain positions because of how side eye he's looking and even though I am appreciating the sculpt and the work that went into designing the cowl to make it look like a very firm combination. And this also is a testament to the design that we're going to see in the movie as well, where they were able to harmonize the tactical look of a much more modern bat suit, while at the same time still retaining little details from that original Burton-esque uh, form of design from the 89 movie, specifically with these little kind of winged tips on the bottom part of the cowl that definitely reminded me an awful lot of that Burton version version where you have a little bit of that bat-like quality that kind of macabre dark to undertones to really suit that suit that Burton was a huge fan of I still don't appreciate what McFarlane needed almost needed to do with these pointy ears I don't know why they come off more as antennae than they really do bad ears there's almost a part of me that is tempted to take a bit of an exacto knife or some kind of drivel and actually file up these ears to make them a bit more pointy and less rounded. But like I mentioned before, since this guy is a bit of a hot rare item to find in stores, I really don't want to press my luck, at least not for the time being. Speaking of little custom jobs, yes, there is a part of me that wishes that the utility belt was yellow. Even though it's detailed just fine and technically speaking it is screen accurate because I believe from some of the trailers we've seen thus far, he does not have a yellow utility belt. It's this time all black. It's the Keaton Batman and we are so used to having him have a yellow utility belt that to see it just completely an all out black, it's a bit uncharacteristically Keaton so a part of me wants to take like a toothpick or something and just dabble it in some yellow paint and paints the utility belt but again that's definitely something that I want to bring up when potentially getting a second unit later on when he becomes a bit more available what definitely does bother me versus those two other minor nitpicks that are solely just nitpicks but this one is a legitimate complaint has to be the little green undertone that we find here towards the boots which are sculpted and detailed beautifully when it comes to the actual molding of the plastic and in fact it's got a really nice sheen and a nice very angular kind of tactical look I just don't appreciate that green undertone that definitely looks intentional so I am somewhat expecting there to be a story driven emphasis on the green undertone on his boots I don't know if there's going to be some form of plot explanation within the movie once we do go in fact see it but for now it definitely bothers me it stands out like a sore thumb and I wish that this was just an all-around black and have kept it a neutral black for the majority of the suit so <laughs> once you're seeing the entirety of the suit you're thinking to yourself this all looks very uniform but once we get down to the boots this in fact truly does bother me and it's definitely something that I'm going to look for in the future to customize and paint black to make sure it goes well with the rest of the bat suit. But there's definitely one quality that needs no custom job. It's one that actually 
gets customized for other bat suits for other batman mcfarlane figures but this one is definitely not going to be needing it because mcfarlane went and did it themselves something that i've been wanting them to do for a long time and i know that there's a second motivation behind them doing so so that you would then feel incentivized to buy the batmobile to buy the bat cycle for the bat flick version and that is of course going to be the long-awaited return or induction if you will of cloth capes for the McFarlane toys batman figures this is sick yes it's not necessarily the most premium quality cape it's a simple cloth that was attached to the cowl but it just does a number on just elevating the presence value and the quality of the figure to make him look all the more badass and it's even stitched and cut here on the bottom part of the cape to look like that of the traditional keaton batman cape and just the overall look just sells the figure even better. And what I found to be also pretty tactical to get this thing to really flow and fit well with the figure is actually utilizing a little bit of the spikes here that are part of that, again, Burton quality of the cowl. And using that to kind of guide the rims of the cape here towards the back so that you kind of have like this much more out of the way form of pose so that you can show off a little bit more of the suit and the shoulder pads a, a little bit better than before and you also have a much clearer area for the articulation that we're about to get into or if you want to take the cape and then kind of put it underneath this particular spike right here to kind of guide it downwards so you can go for a bit more of a drip effect it's not the best because it does kind of coil and kind of stick itself out a little bit here towards the top but it does kind of guide the cape a little bit more towards the bottom in front of him so that it looks more like it's draping like it was in the opening segments of the original 89 movie when he's you know t tackling those muggers and telling them you know you should tell your friends about me overall just the sheer functionality of the cape and being able to do something like this versus other batman figures that we've had in the recent past mcfarlane i plead uh, I'm sorry, you know, some of you may disagree, but I plead that we keep the cloth capes from here on out because if we start to go into the opposite direction, I would probably say maybe for some of the more comic accurate Batman figures like the upcoming Nightfall release, okay, I understand, rubberized cape, go for a much more stylized look, but for some of the movie characters, especially for that potentially rumored what is it a six pack that comes with the 89 version of keaton the proper 89 suit along with the val kilmer batman the clooney batman bat nipples and then of course a repack a reissue of the bale batman without any of the build a bane uh, fig, uh, parts as well as of course robert pattinson bat flag a proper bat flag from batman v superman all of them sporting cloth capes take my money and the cloth cape is of course going to be able to favor the articulation especially when it comes to those shoulders that are fully able to rotate vertically 360 degrees without getting in the way of the cape because you're able to simply just fold it back and as such you are able to technically extend the arms towards the sides except this time around they did manage to put the shoulder guard on the shoulder itself as opposed to the bicep like some other batman figures have done so in the past so this time you are a little bit restricted when it comes to the extension so that is a bit of a compromise to know ahead of time but as you can see right there there's even a little bit of butterfly joint motion i understand that it's technically not a butterfly joint it's just simply the ball joint inside of the shoulder still being able to flex in different directions instead of just vertically but there's an awful lot of shrugging and full rotation motion happening with that shrug that because of the way that the cape is not able to come in the way and become an obstacle, you're able to do just so much with the shoulder. As you can see right there, that this is one of the most impressive shoulder joints I've seen on a McFarlane thus far. And the head joint is also nothing to scoff at either. Like I mentioned before, you are able to give him that kind of brooding look that the Burton version of Michael Keaton's Batman would often do when draping the cape. So you're able to look down like so. Slightly tilt up on the peg if you're able to shrug it towards the back, but it's not the most favorable. But it's able to do something that Keaton's Batman was not able to do whatsoever in those original movies. Be able to turn his head <laughs> a full 360 degrees 
at that. He's able to actually do that, and that's definitely something that you could definitely not often say for Keaton's Batman and his neck cowl. He's also able to slightly tilt from side to side, but like I mentioned before, looking up could have been done just a little better, but just a minor nitpick on my part. Going back to the arms, however, because of the way that the shoulder guard is now attached to the shoulder as opposed to the bicep, you technically can rotate the bicep joint 360, but because of the guard kind of coming in the way here towards the middle center part, it slightly starts to resist and kind of force it away. So you are able to turn it, but I'm not able to fully turn it all the way around. So do be careful there, otherwise you risk breaking it. Two joints at the elbow are fully able to bend all the way upwards and the wrist joint is also very favorable being able to rotate 360 degrees as well as pivot inwards and upwards. There is a mid torso cut that does allow the top part of the body to rotate towards the left and right but not necessarily a full 360 only because of the way that the torso is sculpted so you start to get a little bit of pushback right about right there and again because of how hot and rare this figure currently is I don't really feel like taking my chances however there's an awful lot of crunching and extension towards the back and the front so it's very uh, considerate in that regard and then you can see a little bit more extension happening alongside the waist which does have a joint in there that is able to not only give it some proper extension and crunching towards the front and back but also from side to side on the obliques a little bit of turning and nudging happening horizontally, but unfortunately not a full rotation. And I guess you can maybe make the argument that the reason for why that is happening is because of the crotch piece, which is not exactly all that big. It actually flushes with the armor and is glistening and a very shiny coat right there that again sells the quality of the armor. But unfortunately, because of how much smaller and tighter, more compact it is, it also kind of slightly forces the legs to not move as much as some other McFarlane Batman figures have done so. Because when taking the top legs and extending them towards the front, you can see that it starts to even make an audible kind of resistive noise there as I get to about that angle. So do be careful when moving the legs up and down and even towards the back because it starts to get resisting right about right there that it even doesn't flush all that much towards the back like you see right there before you extension is also a similar case because you are able to extend the legs towards the sides but you start to see a little bit of the diaper piece the crotch piece start to warp here towards the outside parts right about right there so do be careful and doesn't necessarily do a full 180 extension like some other Batman or McFarlane figures period have done so it is a little bit combative there nevertheless you do get two joints at the knees that are fully able to bend all the way upwards and are ratcheted and feel pretty good in hand and of course you couldn't have done it better than to give the Keaton Batman the ankle joints that I personally really adore I love these style of joints that feel much more flush with the rest of the boot and it's good to see that Keaton was no exception here giving an already badass Batman figure a much better ankle joint so that not only have firm posability and movement for the ankles to go upwards and downwards like so but you're fully able to rotate them at two parts at the top and at the bottom and can also kind of pivot inwards and upwards like so so inwards and outwards like that so you have some very proper footing on your boots and then of course to complement those boots you have the toesies that are fully able to bend upwards and even though again the ugly green tint they gave these boots really bother me they at least have very firm planted footing and those joints really help in making this one of the nicer figures to pose in quite a long time one of the things that also helps that is that it's not a very top heavy figure due to the fact that the cape is made out of cloth as opposed to a heavy plastic or a heavy rubber and as such this is again one of the finer figures to pose and actually get to stand without any use for that circular base that these things often come with more so than not i had this figure simply just taken put it on the light box here leave it alone and there you go it's standing on its own without me having to futz or fidget with the legs whatsoever and just firmly stand on its own without toppling not even like five times i would say it's only fallen over like two or three times and this is probably one of the greatest compliments you can give a McFarlane toy ever. And if you were getting tired of me gushing about this figure, then get ready for some more gushing coming up here. Because 
more of Todd's favoritism started to come through, not just in the quality of the figure, but also the accessories they threw in. If you were eagle-eyed and watching this review thus far, you'll notice that he's actually sporting the alternate hands, hands he comes with, which are these fisted hands that are technically the alternate pair versus the ones that he comes boxed in with. And for the posterity of the review, I wanted to have those hands put in place to start things off. That way, we can then showcase the alternate hands, which are going to be one, I guess you could say, kind of like pinch gestating hand to hold something, something very finite in one. And then the other, which is a bit more open and clenched, but it's designed to hold another one of his accessories. And the hand swapping process is also one of the least tedious ones I've had in a while. In fact, there's very little resistance, give a slight tug, comes off very easily while at the same time not feeling very loose at all. There's almost like a secondary pop when you feel it to feel a bit more secure and confirm that it's in place because you put it in, you feel a slight tug, but then you press it even further and you hear a very audible pop and feels very good while at the same time not too loose, not too tight. And there you have the hand firmly in the wrist joint. And with those hands, he's now able to hold his other two accessories, which I am going to nitpick slightly. It's going to be the iconic battering from the original 89 movie, along with the grapple. And they're both coated in this chrome finish, which suits the battering just fine, because I, I do believe it was originally black, but here it just kind of works because it's meant to be just a battering. It's got some fine little details there in the middle and towards the ends of the wings. But overall, it I can't really complain about it too much it's really the grapple the one that i personally feel should have used a bit more paintwork and honestly i think it would have been a solid black instead of the chrome finish the chrome finish just makes it look a little bit cheaper but i do appreciate the little details in the sculpting especially towards the nozzle here at the front i just think that it could have either used an overall plain plain black paint job or at least a couple of little black accents to make it feel a bit more alive, especially towards the handle. But both are able to fit his hands quite nicely, and as you can see, he is ready to go. So, there's honestly just two things for me left to do. First, is to go ahead and get the boys together. That's right, it's time to get the other Batman in here, starting off with... Christian Bale. You know what? Because he's having trouble standing on his own, I'm going to put him over here. And in the middle, I'm going to go ahead and put the Robert Pattinson Batman right there. And with these four guys on screen right now, you pretty much have all of the movie Batman figures thus far. Well, save for one. We technically are missing the new Batfleck from the Flash movie Wave. That is actually on his way so stick around for that review and that's pretty much the missing space that we have right here amongst this roster of batman but here he is to compare with the other on-screen counterparts to see how he holds up and as you can see he's definitely the shinier one the more charismatic looking one the more compelling and less tactical one and <laughs> he definitely is able to hold his own not only as far as his portrayal of batman but also his own mcfarland toys figure and that is the second thing left for me to do is to officially i'm sorry i'm gonna have to declare the michael keaton 89 batman figure here from mcfarland toys for the flash movie so far my figure to beat for ultimate mcfarland toys figure batman figure at least of 2023 because it's able to do just so much right from great feel and quality of the plastic for the bat suit the paint decals the actual sculpting behind the cowl the etching of the bat symbol and then of course the utilization of the cloth cape along with great articulation good accessories at least good implementation of the accessories though my nitpicks aside about the grapple and the batarang it's those alternate hands the consideration behind the guy that just feels very top-notch despite the slight lack of resemblance to keaton at least for the masked version here and i'm left with no choice but to give the 89 keaton batman from the flash movie a solid 9 out of 10. Should you be lucky enough to come across them at your local Target or Walmart so far as of the recording of this video, definitely pick them up. Or if you want to take your chances, 
by ordering him online should he be available in stock. There are going to be affiliate links in the description. You guys can utilize those to help out the channel. While at the same time, trying to bring him home into your McFarlane Toys collection because this guy is definitely a looker. is definitely a centerpiece for your collection. And despite, like I said, my own personal reservations when seeing some of those promo shots and seeing a little bit of that lacking in the likeness for Keaton and the way that they were able to sculpt out that face, it's really that cloth cape and really feeling him in person, feeling him in hand, that does a better serving of justice than some of those promo shots were able to do. In any case, I want you guys to tell your friends about me and my videos and this other video that YouTube is recommending for you to check out right now. Yeah, I'm Batman.